In this tutorial, we're going to take some of the information we learned about multi-lists and apply it toward modeling an organic bench. This model can be found in the sample file called Bench Finished. Here's a summary of steps we'll take. First, we'll import from SketchUp three profiles made of lines. Next, we'll smooth the profiles by fitting spline curves through the profile vertices. We'll use the three smooth profiles to create a loft surface. We'll extract isoparametric curves at regular intervals on the surface. We'll fill the curves to make faces. And finally, we'll thicken the faces to make solids. This tutorial involves many steps, some of which are a bit complicated, so be sure to follow carefully. But stick with it till the end, the results are very neat. The three starter profiles can be found in the sample file called Bench Profiles. Each is comprised of lines, and each is its own group. In Viz, add a wire source node, then back in SketchUp, select the profile groups. The selection order here is important because it affects how the loft will be created. Use Shift while selecting and select one by one in order. Then set these as the wire source. Back in Viz, we can see the three profiles. Add a preview to the wire source to see that three wires are listed. Choose BREP wire vertices and connect the wire source output to the wires to extract. Connect another preview to the vertices output to see the list of points. This is a two-dimensional list, a list of three lists, with each list containing six vertices. Choose Curve Interpolate Curve and connect the vertices list to the points for the curves. This creates three smooth curves that start and end at different vertices. To close these curves, double-click the periodic attribute which toggles the attribute to true. The interpolate curve node took the three lists of points with paths 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and created a separate curve for each set of points. This is generally how multi-lists behave. Lists prepended by different paths are treated separately as different streams of data. We can see this by adding another preview to the curve output. Each single curve has a path that matches its input data. The next step is to loft these curves, but the loft node needs a one-dimensional list as input. So add a flatten multi-list node to reduce the two-dimensional list to a one-dimensional list. Connect the curve output as the list to flatten. A new preview node shows that this list is now one-dimensional. Add a loft node and connect the flatten list as the curves to loft. To remove the sides of the solid, toggle off the solid attribute. Those sides would create complications later on, and now we have a shell. Add a BREP components node and connect the loft output to the BREP to decompose. Set the type attribute to face. By connecting a preview to the BREP components output, we can see that the loft node generated a shell composed of two faces. The number of faces can vary, it depends on the complexity of the curves used as input by the loft node. The next step is to extract the ISO curves from these two faces and turn them into wires so that new faces can be created from them. Add a slider node and change its name to number of slabs. Set the type to integer and the range should go from 3 to 30. Set the initial value of the slider to 10. Add a range node and connect the slider to the number of elements. This provides a list of numbers for the locations of the different ISO curves. Returning to the BREP components node, choose Analysis Surface Domain and connect the BREP components output to it. Adding a preview to the surface domain output shows the parametric range of the faces. The V domain for both faces is 0 to 1 so we can leave the domain attribute of the range node as is from 0 to 1. Add a point node and connect the range output to the point Y values. Connect a preview to the point output. These will be used to construct the UV locations of the ISO curves. Choose Surface ISO curve and connect the points as the UV input. 
Back to the preview of the two loft faces. They're both on the same list, which is one-dimensional. Both have paths 0, 0. But we want each face to provide its own data stream so that the ISO curve node will treat them separately. So add a deepened multilist node and connect the faces to it. A preview node shows that these faces are now in two separate lists, one with path 0, 0, 0 and the other with path 0, 0, 1. Connect these faces as the ISO curve surfaces. Connecting a preview to the ISO curve U output, again, we have two separate lists. The first list of segments with path 0, 0, 0 are the ISO segments generated from face 0, 0, 0. The second list of segments with path 0, 0, 1 are generated from the face with 0, 0, 1. Now, in order to generate a face from the ISO curves, we need to create a closed wire that surrounds the face. But the ISO curves are broken into two parts, one for each face. The wire node takes a list of segments and creates a wire. But this node needs a one-dimensional list of segments. So we need to add a node called transpose multilist. Now we have 10 streams of data from 000 to 009. And each stream has two curves. Transpose multilist works in a similar way as transposing a matrix. Multilist elements with 00i, j are swapped with elements 00j, i. Now add a BREP wire node and connect the curves to it. Toggle off the previews of the loft node and the BREP components node to better see the ISO curves. Now we're ready to finish up. Add a BREP face from wire to create faces inside each ISO curve. Add a thicken shape node to give each face some thickness. Now we can go back to our slider and change the number of slabs. Add a shell sink node and go back to SketchUp to see our new bench. Move it a bit away from the original profile groups. And here's the best part. Open any profile group to change its shape. The bench updates automatically in real time.